I'm Linda Baker from Michigan, originally now from South Carolina, and I'm doing some product demos here for Cheap Joe in Boone, North Carolina. And I would like to talk to you a little bit about masking. Um, from my videos and from my workshops, I get a lot of emails where people ask me about how do you put masking on, what are the, what are the tips, what are the rules, and there are really quite a few. So first off, I'd like to tell you that my favorite masking at this time is Pebeo, uh, Pebeo it's sometimes pronounced, it's from France, and it comes in a large size and a smaller size as well, and this is available from Cheap Joe's. I buy it in the larger container, but then I use it in the smaller container. I find that as um, after I'm done with this container, I will refill it with the larger container, and that way I've always got some on hand. But if I put it in the smaller container, it's a little more manageable. I don't spill it as easily. Um, when I spill it, it doesn't ruin my entire outfit, just part of it. Uh, because you will spill it if you're doing anything like an artist, you're going to spill it. Now, they sell many brands. They sell the Incredible White, which is um, white. It's a little bit thicker. They sell um, some brands that are clear. I don't love the clear because you can't find it on your paper. And especially if you're working with layering, you can't see one layer after another on your paper. I don't particularly love the fluorescent colors because it affects my eye too dramatically. If you're going to go put colors on your paper and you already have a fluorescent orange or a fluorescent aqua on your paper, that's going to influence you as an artist. So the, one of the reasons I like it is the color. It's a neutral gray and so when I take the masking off I can do something lighter or something darker and I'm not affected. Uh, my colors that I've chosen aren't affected by the color of my masking. Another reason that I like it, it is the most liquid masking that I have tried. One really nice tip on masking fluid that I have found is that I store it upside down. And this is for any brand of masking fluid that you select. Uh, what goes wrong with masking fluid is that when oxygen hits it, it develops a film and it thickens. And then you all know if you've had your jar open too long or whatever, you get a film on top of your masking fluid. So another reason why I use a small container is because it doesn't get as big a film on it. But also if you store it upside down, and I store it upside down in my studio and even when I'm in my workshops when I paint, the air does not get to the masking fluid and it does not uh, form any film on it. So you'll get more longevity out of your masking fluid. It will last longer and it will be there ready to use when you need it. Um, and then. I remove the masking fluid with a rubber cement. This is a Cheap Joe's rubber cement remover. And you just go on your paper and you can pull the masking up. And I'll talk more about that later. Another tip that I just might tell you is that if you're going to use it, a lot of people think that you should dip your brush in soap before you use the masking fluid. And I think that this is um, a misnomer. What you really want to use the soap for is to clean your brush if you get too much masking in it. I dip my brush in water first so that my masking goes on wet and then every few strokes I will clean it in the water fresh. If you end up with a gummy uh, in your brush and in, in around your ferrule, that's when you want to dip it in some soap. And I recommend just a little bit of liquid dish soap. I use Dawn because believe it or not it does cut the grease and it does cut the masking fluid better than some of the other brands. I just fill this little container with dish soap, let it dry, and then I can go in and I can put just a little bit on my brush and then I just work it through very carefully with um, my thumbnail and work it out of the brush and when you work it out of the brush you'll see the little nubbies come out that have um, built up and then you want to rinse it really good before you uh, use it again. So every few strokes that I'm masking I will clean my brush with water and if you clean it with water every few strokes you'll never have to use the soap. But we all ruin masking brushes, we know that. So what do I use to put masking on? This is another wonderful Cheap Joe's product. And uh, they come in several sizes here. I've got a full set and they're called ugly brushes. They're an inexpensive brush and they're designed for doing something that you don't want to use your good paint brushes for. So they can be used for other things besides masking fluid, but they work really well for masking fluid. Uh, several things I like about them. They're a synthetic, they're acrylic, so the masking goes on very nice. They come to a very nice point so that you can get a very thin line. You can get a little branch, a little uh, calligraphic line with them very easily. And they come in some flats so you can do the side of a barn quickly if you need to. 
I use masking fluid rather than using a um, like a contact paper or a, or a masking film because I actually can apply the masking faster than I can go to all the trouble of cutting all that out and doing all that kind of stuff. And then even when you use a masking film, the masking can go under the film and the paint can go under the film and then you don't end up with clean lines. So I really like this and I like all the different brushes. One of the real bonuses of these brushes are that they are bright yellow and because of that you can tell them from your other brushes so you don't accidentally grab one of your good paint brushes when you're going to use it. So that's sort of the skinny on masking and um, email me if you need more tips on that because I'm the queen of masking. <laughs> Thank you.